Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. The other day I went to lunch with a team of people at a local pizza restaurant here in Georgia where I live. Uh, When it came time to order food, It was so tempting to order pizza like everybody else did. So there were about 12 of us at the table and it was decided that it was best to order various kinds of pans of pizzas for the entire table. So there I was at the table looking at the menu that had all kinds of deep dish pizza options. There was even some pasta options, some calzone options to choose from. So I decided on a spinach, chicken, and avocado, wait for it, salad. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Kind of dry, right? Yeah, folks. uh, Instead of ordering pizza, I ordered salad. Man, just like a few of us did at the table. About two or three other people ordered pizza, excuse me, salads as well. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Oscar, what's the big deal? You're healthy. You're very active. One slice of pizza is not going to kill you. Yeah, you're right. But here's the thing. It's been 33 months and four weeks since I ate pizza the last time. So, yeah, that's almost three years, folks. Yep, I'm keeping track. Now, you may say, "Okay, Oscar, come on now. That's going overboard. You can have a slice of pizza. You know, yeah, it's been two something years, almost three years. But you see, here's the thing. For me, pizza was something I used to crave. In fact, I used to indulge in pizza on a regular. Pizza Thursdays were very common in our household, not to mention the other times throughout the week that I would sneak and go get pizza during lunch sometimes. Oh, my gosh, it was crazy. You know, I'm proud to say that I didn't give in to the desire to eat pizza that day when we went out with my team. And let me say this, too. I don't judge people for what they eat. I don't look at what other people have on their plates and make certain kinds of prejudgments. Listen, I used to be 268 pounds, folks, and I used to indulge in all kinds of foods. So I do believe that food is meant to be enjoyed. I mean, come on. We don't have to stress out over food, especially going into the holidays. So uh, here's the thing. We can all give up a certain food, right? But still struggle with the craving for something else that may be harming our bodies and setting us back and ruining our weight loss journey. So it's not about the things that we give up, but rather about developing a better lifestyle. So that's why the focus of this week's episode is all about focusing and redirecting our attention to what we need to do in preparation for the new year. I want you to develop a healthy lifestyle beyond the holidays, something that you can be proud of. You see, around the holidays, a lot of people make a bunch of New Year's resolutions, and for some reason, they fall off within the first couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, four weeks later, three months have gone by. The first quarter of the year has gone by, and you've fallen back into the old habits, the old lifestyle, and so forth. None of us wants to actually give up on the things that we put our minds to. But that's why in this week's episode, I believe you're going to get a lot of value out of it. You're going to learn some simple ways to improve your overall health. I'm going to give you some practical recommendations like I always do for developing lifelong good habits. I want you to be self-motivated. I don't want you to have to rely on anybody else. When times get tough and you feel like giving in and having, you know, the bag of chips and the cookies and all the other stuff. So, again, it's not about what we give up, but rather about developing a better lifestyle. So, my friends, stick around to hear the rest of today's episode. You don't want to miss it. Let's go. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or a comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. 
Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo, helping diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. You know, today, let's dive into this episode. It's not about what we give up, but rather developing a better lifestyle. Before we go further, I want to give a shout out to my followers on social media, whether it's my Facebook community, uh, or if you're on Instagram or even TikTok, shout out to my TikTok followers who've been with me since day one. And from there, you found the podcast and so forth. I really appreciate you guys. So I have a question that came in from one of my TikTok followers. Her name is Drews Eleonora. She asked recently, can you share how you have changed your eating habit? You know, I get this question a lot. And so, Drews, thank you. This is an excellent question. Well, let me say this. You know, I started focusing on my lifestyle of eating rather than on my habits. Yeah, I had a lot of poor habits when it came to what I put in my body. I used to drink a lot of soda on a regular basis, a lot of sweet drinks, a lot of pastries, a lot of pasta. You know, I mentioned about pizza earlier. And yeah, that was my habit every week, every day, just not eating healthy. So when it comes to a lifestyle versus habits, some people may say there's really not a difference. Well, you know, how I eat nowadays does didn't happen overnight. Yes, I had to examine my habits, which actually affected how I live. Let me explain. You see, for me, it was a gradual shift that began with educating myself about type 2 diabetes because I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes back in August 2020, and I had no clue of what type 2 diabetes really was. All I knew was people could either lose their limbs, uh, like their legs, or they can die from it. Uh, Some people have gone blind. So I had very limited knowledge when it came to diabetes. I didn't even know there was different types of diabetes, you know, from type one and type two. And now they're saying that Alzheimer's is type three diabetes, which is crazy. So I had to educate myself about type two diabetes. And that educating of myself led to me learning about nutrition. And the more and more I started learning about nutrition, you know, giving the body what it needs, what is it that our bodies actually thrive on? Uh, versus the things that our bodies don't need, that eventually helped me to make better choices with the things that I was putting in my body. So as a result, I developed new and better habits. And because I started developing new habits, that's how I eventually started developing a healthier lifestyle of eating. I mean, I started looking at, okay, well, uh, what was I eating in the morning and what was I eating at lunch and what was I eating before bed and, and so forth. So a lot of that educating of myself informed me to the point where it's like, hey, this is my lifestyle. This is how I want to live. So for me, the difference between just having habits and having a lifestyle, you know, it's like a it, there's a thin line. But for me, I focus a lot on my lifestyle and helping other people to develop a lifestyle of good choices because you can have a habit of eating cookies and you can stop eating those cookies. But what are you doing in place of not eating the cookies or do you have a habit or do you have a lifestyle of making better choices when it comes to getting rid of unhealthy food, the snacks and so forth. But how are you cooking? You know, the process in which you cook, how often are you eating out? All of those things play into more than just your habits, but rather your lifestyle. Some people may say, "Okay, well, you know, I'm just going to go vegan and that's going to be my lifestyle. You know, okay, that could be your lifestyle of choice. You you say, "Okay, I don't want to do any more meat. And so forth for, you know, moral reasons and health reasons. Okay, great. But the point is, we want to get to the point where we're focusing not so much on our bad habits, but rather on developing a better lifestyle of making good choices. So, again, thank you, Eleonora, Drews Eleonora, 
from TikTok. Great question. I really appreciate that. So her question ties directly into today's topic. As I mentioned, we're going to be talking about it's not about what you give up, folks, but rather developing a better lifestyle. You know, as some of you may be aware, I love daily exercise, whether it's running outside, gym workouts, trail running, strength training, endurance training, hiking, and a few other physical activities. These all help to keep me active. I'm 50 now, folks, and I am so full of energy, but that didn't happen overnight. I know a bunch of other 50-year-olds and even 60-year-olds and 70-year-olds that are living their best life. In fact, I started uh, running with the run club near me recently. And I'm talking about these folks are in their 50s, their 60s and 70s, and even some folks in their 80s who've been running way longer than I have. And these folks are enjoying life to the fullest. They're enjoying their best life. You know, I, I'm in other groups as well, but this particular run group, I mean, they have this group chat that literally is going on every day throughout the week. And folks are talking about running. Somebody in the group is always talking about organizing a run, you know, that may be outside of the, the normal weekly runs. And, you know, even if it's only a handful of people that go out. But these folks are starting as early as 530 in the morning or 6 a.m. Like on Thursdays, I run with the group on Thursday mornings at 6 a.m. So that's the first group. They run what's called loops. Right. So each loop is the equivalent of five miles. And so the first group may meet up at 6 a.m. But get this, (laughs) two of the members in the group. Uh, By the time they come to the 6 a.m., they've already met at about 530 to run like two miles or something like that to warm up before the 6 a.m. group starts. (laughs) And these folks in their 50s and 60s, man, you know, and you just you look at them and they're like, hey, we're promoting a healthy lifestyle. So they'll run. uh, So the main group comes, let's say, around 6 a.m. And so we'll run the first loop which again is five miles. And then at 7 a.m., another group will join um, the first group. And so they'll go out again. The first group grows, goes out again some mornings and the second group picks up. So last week, for example, I ran two loops. So that was 10 miles before going into work and getting my day going. Man, that was, it was, it was great, man. So. Uh, Some people even run three loops. So I'm not even bragging. Y'all know me. I'm not bragging about how much exercise I'm doing. I like to really shout out other folks and what they're doing. So my point is these folks are out there enjoying healthy living. Now, I know some of you who are listening, you may not like running. You may dread running. I used to dread running. I used to struggle with running half a mile, let alone a mile. Because I was heavy. My bones used to ache, my knees, my back. I was dealing with inflammation. It was all kinds of stuff was going on. But the more and more I stopped dropping, I started dropping the weight and start eating healthy and just changing my overall lifestyle, the easier things became. And I started simplifying my life. You see, no one in this group that I was talking about They're not competing against anybody else. It's simply a fun group of people that enjoy their community of runners. So I want you to enjoy what you do. You should be enjoying your lifestyle, whether it's your eating lifestyle or your physical uh, exercise or your physical activity lifestyle. When it comes to your weight loss journey, I know you may be struggling right now. You're going into the holidays and you're looking back at the whole year. And you're like, man, I put on a lot of weight after, you know, Thanksgiving and now going into the rest of the holiday season. And man, you're just like, God, how did all this happen? But you're like, you know what? I want to get ready for the new year. Perhaps you've been so focused on the things you need to eliminate in terms of your food and the things you want to give up. And you're not really focusing on developing a lifestyle of healthy eating. 
you, you're hearing about all these weight loss programs. You're hearing about these waist trainers and you're hearing about all these pills that you can take. And it's so crazy, man, all the things that are out there to have people to fast track their weight loss. And you may be in that situation where it's like, you know what, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll spend whatever it takes, you know, to do the surgeries or to do the the certain pills and so forth. Now, listen, folks, I'm not judging anybody for the choices that they make when it comes to losing weight. I know some of you are struggling. Matter of fact, I know someone who used to be over 300 and something pounds and they decided to have gastric bypass surgery and that was their way of losing weight and so forth. And unfortunately, it did not change the way how they ate. They still ate uh, certain things that were not uh, healthy. And yeah, they're dealing with the consequences of still making poor food choices. So my point, folks, is I don't want you all to make any drastic decisions when it comes to weight loss. There's something about putting forth the effort, even when it gets tough, even when it gets hard. And I know it's easier said than done. You may say, oh, Oscar, it's easy for you. You know what I mean? You were you just started going to the gym and eating right and everything just became better for you. Well, folks, listen, I used to be on high blood pressure medication. I was at risk for a heart attack and developing heart disease. I remember being in uh, going through stress tests on my heart to determine if I needed to have a stent put in and they were getting ready to do the procedure and something miraculous happened to where I didn't need to eventually get the stent. So folks, listen, none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't have the perfect solution. But what I do know is when I started doing a personal assessment on my own life and taking inventory of my bad habits and poor choices that I was making and deciding to, you know what, it's time to turn my life around. Because of that decision, because of those changes that I made, I was able to not only get off high blood pressure medications, I was able to get off diabetes medication, high cholesterol medication, uh, and so forth. I mean, folks, it didn't happen overnight, but it took me changing my mindset, changing my mind frame to uh, a more positive outlook and really deciding that enough is enough. I got tired of being heavy. I got tired of being. Um, sick. I got tired of having these black circles around my eyes. I got tired of having, you know, the skin tags around my neck. I got tired of the discoloration around my neck, which is a sign for some people when they have type 2 diabetes. I got tired of just r hitting this plateau of weight loss. I just got tired of all of that stuff. And yeah, there were certain things that I cut cold turkey, some things I, I gradually weaned myself off of, but I am glad that I made the decision to change. So I'm no different, folks. If, if I can do it, you can too. I keep saying that, but you, got, you have to get rid of the stinking thinking. You have to get rid of that, that defeatist mentality. You have to get rid of the I can't mentality. You tuned in to this podcast, not for me to co-sign on any misery you may be feeling. I know it may be miserable because you've been dealing with this issue for a while, but I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to pacify anything. I want to encourage you and motivate you to make the personal lifestyle changes to not only reverse type 2 diabetes, but to also reverse some other conditions that you may be dealing with. You know what? I don't know what your age is right now. You could be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Heck, you could be in your 90s. And we can all make some changes to the way we eat and the other lifestyle uh, habits that we have in order to achieve better results. So I want to give you some tips. I want to give you some things to think about as you prepare for the new year, things that I believe will help you along your journey of not only weight loss, 
but having better focus, having better sleep and just feeling better about yourself and feeling better in your body. If I can do it, folks, you can too. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to start with a personal assessment. It's something about being conscious and being honest about your current lifestyle. Taking a personal self-assessment is very important. You got to know where you are and what specific changes need to be made. It's important for you to start journaling where you are. That's what I started doing. Remember, I mentioned about how long it's been since I've had a slice of pizza. Well, I've been keeping track of not only that, but just some other things that uh, whether it's my weight or even my sleep, I can go back to, gosh, August 2021. Excuse me. Yeah, August 2021. and. Uh, Even uh, August 20, from the time I got diagnosed until now, I could tell you all kinds of things that was going on with me and I can look back and be an encouragement to you. So it's important to journal where you are currently, whether you journal using pictures or you have an actual journal where you write things down or you use an app. The main thing is I want you to keep track of where you are. I know some things may be painful for you to face. But it's important, whether it's your weight or the things you're eating uh, or so forth, or your lack of exercise or kind of where you are with your health right now. Track everything. Trust me, you're going to look back and you're going to be grateful that you did. Now, here's some things I want you to ask yourself and think about as you become a more conscious uh, person when it comes to your lifestyle and your habits. Do you consume sugary drinks and how often? I'm talking about soda, fruit juices, sports drinks, energy drinks, coffee, flavored iced coffees, et cetera. Are you consuming them daily, monthly, weekly? How often and how much? Another question. Do you eat sugary foods and how often? I'm talking about candies, pastries, donuts, cakes, pies, cookies, breakfast cereal bars, and so forth. Do you eat snack foods and how often? Chips, nuts, snack bars, pretzels, dry foods, gummy bears, crackers, popcorn, you know. How often do you eat fried foods? I'm talking about fried chicken, fried fish, french fries, and so forth. Now, again, you want to journal how often are you eating them daily, monthly, uh, weekly. How often do you eat fast foods? Oh my gosh, I used to eat out probably five, six days a week, folks. How often do you eat bread and bread products? Talking about white or even whole wheat bread. How how often are you eating pizza? (laughs) How often are you eating pasta? How often do you eat rice? How often do you eat potatoes? How often are you drinking water? I realized that I was not drinking as much water. There would be days that would go by I wouldn't drink any water, not even realizing it because I was drinking a whole bunch of fruit juices and soda and stuff like that. And my intake of water was very, very minimal. I drink water every day now, folks. I love water. How often do you eat fresh fruit and fresh vegetables? You want to know about that. How much sleep are you getting? Are you not getting enough sleep at night? I remember I used to only get like maybe three, four hours of sleep at night because I was just always going, always just my mind was just always on. I was stressed out. I was overworked and overwhelmed and so forth. What about exercise? How often are you exercising? If you're not working out, if you're not exercising at all, I mean, I'm talking about even walking. If you're not doing any of that, write that down. We're talking about where you are right now. It's like when you go to the mall, when you do a personal assessment, you want to get to a certain place or destination in a mall. So you, as soon as you walk in through the entrance, there's this map and says, this is where you are. So that's your personal assessment. You're walking into this new era of your life and you have to determine where you are in order to know where you're going. So just like when you go to the mall and you see the map and it says you are here and you're trying to get to X name store, whatever it is, you know how to get there because there is a map. 
So you have to determine where you are in order to know where you're going. I like to do and tell people about taking 21 days to really form or begin even forming good habits and forming a better lifestyle. Now, 21 is not a magic number. It's just, I remember just hearing about, you know, habits are formed in 21 days. I mean, you can form good habits in less than that, or it may take you longer. But 21 is like an an easy thing for people to remember. So I'm going to give you two phases that you can knock out in 21 days. So let's say if you start on New Year's Day, so you give yourself some time. So New Year's Day, January 1, or you could start this Anytime. If you're listening to this and it's much, much later in the year or wherever, and you wanted to jumpstart your lifestyle of changes, take the next 21 days. When you're ready to hit go, I want you to start. There are two phases I want you to focus in on. There's the weaning phase. And yes, there is a cold turkey phase. But remember what our topic was from the beginning. It's not about what you give up. It's really about developing a better lifestyle. But yes, it is going to require you to wean yourself off of certain things and um, go cold turkey on some other things, right? But again, educate yourself. So day one to day 10, this is your weaning phase. I want you to start limiting certain problem foods and drinks to once a week, whether it's bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, your sugary drinks, cakes, cookies, and so forth. So for the next 10 days, hear what I'm saying. I want you to start limiting. I'm not telling you to eliminate, but I want you to start weaning yourself off by limiting certain foods. This also includes fried foods, fast foods. If you are consuming cookies and pies and so forth, things that you eat on a regular basis. Now, remember, we just talked about um, journaling what you currently are doing with your lifestyle and being brutally honest. Now we want to talk about weaning ourselves off of those things little by little. So, for example, Oscar used to eat pizza probably three times a week. That's pizza. That's not including the cookies. That's not including the chips. That's not including the sugary drinks. I'm taking one item at a time. Now, I'm not saying you take 10 days and only just focus on one item. I really want you to look at everything that you're putting in your body. If there are certain things that you want to start weaning yourself off of, that you know is not good for yourself and not good for your health. I want you to get those things. Take three things. It could be five things or it could be one thing. It's up to you. The point is, I want you to start limiting those items to once a week. Again, back to my pizza analogy and my pizza craving situation. Oscar used to have pizza three, four times a week or Yeah, that's not even talking about how much of the pizza I was eating in one session. Pizza Thursdays was wild. You're talking about like five slices of pizza. That one day I needed to just be, you know, limit myself to just one slice. So, but it took some time. So you hear what I'm saying, right? When it comes to wean yourself, again, look at how often you're eating something or consuming something. And start weaning yourself off of that and keep track of that. So again, for the next 10 days, so day one to day 10, again, that's your weaning phase. Same thing when it comes to eating vegetables and fruit. If you are not eating fruit at all, I want you to start incorporating at least one serving, maybe two servings or three serving of vegetables a day. Same thing with fruit. Now, again, if you're, and I'm not talking about dried fruit that you get in a bag. I'm not talking about these little packets of fruit. I'm talking about actual whole 
fruit, fresh fruit and vegetables. If you're not eating vegetables now, I want you to start eating fresh vegetables. Even if you get a bag of carrots and, and celery, start somewhere. What about water? If you're not drinking water at all on a daily basis, start drinking and being conscious of drinking at least one glass of water with every meal. Think about it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. If you only eat lunch, drink a glass of water. You get what I'm saying. Now, what about cooking? If you are not cooking now, if you are not, if you're eating out a lot and you eat out like I used to five, six times a week, that's something that I want you to wean yourself off of and start cooking more. If you're eating out and eating a whole bunch of fast food, start weaning yourself down to cooking more. You're going to end up saving money. That's another benefit of this weaning phase is you're going to start cooking more and being intentional about what you are putting in your body. And you're going to have the benefit of losing, uh, excuse me, saving lots of money. Trust me, you're going to love it. And when it comes to sleep, if you're only getting four hours of sleep, add another half an hour to another hour to your sleep. Again, this is uh, also about weaning ourselves off of, but also incorporating new things. So if you kind of see where I'm going, I'm talking about weaning, but also adding. So hopefully you understand what I'm, I'm talking about. OK, now, day 11 through uh, 21. This is your cold turkey phase. <laughs> this is probably going to be like really hard for some folks. Now, listen, if you get to day 11, not if, but when you get to day 11 and you feel yourself shaking and it's like, no, I, I got to have, you know, an extra slice of bread. I know this weaning phase was supposed to be this, 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 but I'm not ready to cut it out. You know, listen, don't beat yourself up. OK, you, it's all about developing a lifestyle. Uh, for me, my a lifestyle complete transformation didn't happen in 21 days. That was just a jump start, me getting into a different habit or developing new habits. That's what I'm doing with you and what I'm sharing with you today. I'm not telling you to go on this 21 day uh, transformation and this is going to all be magical in 21 days and you're going to be, you know, 50 pounds lighter. I don't know that that's going to happen. This is really just to get you started, folks. And then you can start increasing, you can start resetting and going uh, a step further, you know, but we got to start somewhere. OK. So the cold turkey phase, uh, this is that phase where you really start cutting out things that, you know, for sure, for sure are not good for you. Going back to the breads, the rice uh, and pasta, the sugary drinks, the cakes and the cookies and the pies. Some of the stuff we've already talked about, those problem foods. Yeah, there are certain things you're going to be able to easily just cut out cold turkey. And some things I is going to take a little bit longer than 21 days. But what I want you to do is, as you did the first 10 days with the weaning off, take it a step further. You know, there may be a week where you're like, hey, I'm going to take uh, an entire week. You know, uh, I'm going to take the rest of this month and I'm not going to touch any rice. I'm not going to touch any pasta. I'm not going to touch any potatoes, no sugary drinks and just keep myself going. Now, I know some nutritionists and dietitians, they don't believe in the elimination type diets, but I think there's something valuable about taking a time period to give our bodies a chance to reset. Now, uh, will there be times where after you've lost a lot of weight and you're living your best life and you're enjoying, you know, uh, great food that you do eat some rice and pasta and bread? Sure, of course. That happened with me. But there was also a time where I was like, you know what, I'm serious about this transformation and I'm not going to touch any of these things for X amount of days or months or whatnot. It was just a commitment for me. It was pizza. 
Like I said, I'm going on almost three years of not eating pizza. So for me, I went cold turkey on pizza because that was a big problem for me, which led me to gain big weight. (laughs) So that was me. So you get what I'm saying. So in this cold turkey phase, you know, yeah, no fast food. I really think you from day 11 to day 21, try not eating fast food at all. Or if you do go to a fast food place, go to some place that actually has really, really good, healthier food options than than what you've been eating. I mean, like the fried chicken places. I mean, guys, you don't need that. You don't need fried food. You don't need fried chicken. You don't need fried fish. You absolutely do not need anything fried in your diet. And you can't convince me otherwise that it's actually a necessity. And I think we all know that. You don't need french fries. So let's stick it out, okay, guys? Same thing with sleep and drinking plenty of water. Just kind of re-up or increase your sleep, increase your intake of water during this time period, increase your fresh vegetables, increase your cooking, increase your fruit intake. Matter of fact, I want you to this from day 11 to day 21, start eating uh, five servings of fresh fruit and veggies. You know, you can spread that throughout the day. Give your body the nutrients that it needs, folks. You know, this upcoming year, uh, 2024, I'm going to talk a lot about nutrition. Um, That's my thing. You know, you can't out exercise a bad diet, as I've said before. But in any case, folks, there's a lot of things that we can do to transform our lives. There There are different programs. There are different detox programs. People like to start juicing. I mean, I I love juicing. I love making my own smoothies. You know, I'll make sometimes instead of for dinner, I'll just make a big smoothie and I'm good to go, you know? And uh, yeah, same thing for breakfast some days. I may only eat lunch or only eat dinner some days, or I may just eat three times a day. It's just what we're putting in our bodies that makes a big difference. So as I wrap up, I want to leave you with my recommendations. And these are some of the things that I did to turn things around for me. And these are more like inspirational things that I want you to think about. uh, Things that will help you to stay motivated. So here are 10 things. I want you to take your health seriously. Number one. Number two, I want you to change the way you eat every day. Make some subtle changes, but be about change. Number three, I want you to drink more water and eliminate sugary drinks. You don't need sugary drinks. Now, again, for clarity, this is beyond just the 21 days. These are just things that I want you to incorporate in your life regardless to help you to to develop a healthy lifestyle. Number four, I want you to make exercise a lifestyle and not a short-term fix. Don't get in the gym because you're trying to lose 30 pounds to fit in a certain dress because you have this event that's coming up or whatnot. Exercise because you want to develop a lifestyle of exercise and physical activity. Number five, I want you to change your relationship with food. I know a lot of us, you know, when we're going through certain challenges in life, we turn to food for comfort, but food is not meant to comfort us. Fuel, food is meant to fuel our bodies, give us the nourishment and the nutrition that it needs to uh, thrive. Number six, I want you to trust the process even when you don't see immediate results. Now, this is big, folks. Just trust the process. Trust the things that I'm telling you. And you're going to see results. Just don't quit midstream. Okay. You got to put in the work day after day and you will see results. Number seven, learn about the benefits of losing weight. There are tons of benefits. You know, will, uh, losing weight will help you with your sleep or help you to drop your A1C. Um, there are a whole bunch of things that you can benefit from by just simply losing even 
15% of your current body weight. Not only will you be able to move better, again, you'll sleep better. You'll just feel better, folks. Trust me. And, you know, you'll be able to get to the point where you can buy new clothes and enjoy getting rid of four X's. I mean, I remember I was up to four X and three X clothes. And man, I, I eventually was able to get rid of the four X and then the three X and then the extra large with the two X and then eventually the extra large. And folks, I right now wear medium and now I'm able to fit into some small items without me looking crazy. <laughs> Any case, number eight, uh, don't compare your progress with someone else's results. You know, they say comparison is the thief of progress. Number nine, make yourself accountable to yourself. Look at the person in the mirror and be honest with that person and let that person know, hey, it's time to make some change. And number 10, this is very important to me. And uh, I don't know where you are with your faith, but I am a man of faith. I had to put my trust not only in my own process, but I had to trust God. Uh, I had to really just trust that uh, I was here, placed on earth for a greater purpose. And that gave me the drive to want to continue to live better and make better choices with my health. And now I'm able to help other people simply because not only did I trust the process, but I trusted God and I trusted God with my life. So stand on your faith, believe, and you will receive the results you're looking for. Okay. So that's how I got started, folks. There's so much more ongoing work that we have to do to maintain a healthy lifestyle, but we can do it, folks. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for sticking around and have a great, great holiday. Have a great new year, folks. There's so much to look forward to in the first quarter of the, a new year, any year. The first six months are great. The, the third quarter is going to be great for you and you're going to finish the year strong because you're going to start off strong. OK, so if you will go to my website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com, I have a free resource that I would like you to download that's going to help you shop for food and make some better food choices when it comes to choosing fruit and vegetables. So. Get that. And the last thing I want to do is recommend this book by James Clear. I talk about James Clear a lot in his book. It's, it's called Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. It, they have it on physical copy and audible as well, where you can listen to it uh, while you're working out or you're taking a walk or whatnot. In any case, folks, uh, I appreciate you. And as always, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can, my friend. And above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.